OCS tutorial series here on OCS World. Uh, this is video number two. Uh, if you remember from the previous video, we did a bit of an introduction and a look at the map and how to read the map. And in today's video, we are going to be taking a look at the basic unit, you know, ground unit or various other units that you're going to see in the game. Uh, I'm going to take a bit of time to explain what you're looking at when you look at a combat unit, um, a little bit about how they function, because uh, I believe that the individual ground unit is essentially the best place to start when you're looking at the board, because as you play the game, you're playing the game with these units, and you're primarily engaging the enemy with these units. So, although I am still going through the manual in as linear a fashion as possible, there will be times that I'm going to skip ahead a little bit and go back and cover different things. To give you an example, um, where we last left off uh, in the video was the sequence of play. Now, there's a whole page here dedicated to describing the narrative sequence of play, or the outline of the sequence of play. And as I mentioned um, in the previous video, you know, OCS has a turn schedule that tells you how to play each turn for both sides and what you can do at every single point in time. So it's a pretty simple, easy structured system that is not too difficult to follow once you understand how all of the components work. But if I start describing the sequence of play now, I'm going to be talking about a lot of concepts that don't yet make sense. So I'm going to go forward by one page to a basic combat unit. And I'm going to use Tunisia as a bit of an example of all the different combat units that we might find. But I'm going to jump into Smolensk as well because there are some units in Smolensk that uh, do not appear in Tunisia in terms of types of units. Um, but uh, the first thing I want to start with uh, is just by reading this 3.0 units and markers. So chapter 3.0 in the OCS 4.3 manual refers to everything you need to know about units and markers. Now it says here, the terms used to describe classes of units have precise meanings that are important to understand these rules. For instance, Ground units describes a broader range of units than combat units, which are a subset of ground units. And attack-capable units are a further subdivision of combat units. Use of the word units by itself, not modified by independent units or DG mode units, for example, collectively refers to all units, ground, naval, and air, when a narrower context is not obvious. So it's important to understand that the term unit is referring to a specific type of counter. And there are some counters that they're not referring to, but the biggest subdivision of units would be combat units and non-combat units, and we're going to go a little bit more into that here in 3.1. Ground units are divided into a pair of large subcategories, combat units as described in 3.2, and non-combat units. Each has some or all of the following printed on the counter. A unit designation, size and type symbols, combat, barrage, action rating, and movement values, and supply throw and barrage ranges. Now there's not going to be any one unit that has all of those things. Uh, what it's describing is everything that you might find on a particular unit. So what I'm going to do here in Tunisia is I'm just going to line up a few units here in Bonn some examples of some combat units and some non-combat units that you might find in Tunisia 2, for example, but are also representations of units that you'll find in many different games. So I'm just taking these units from stacks around the map, and I think I might take a unit from the Allied Order of Arrival. Don't worry if you don't understand what I'm talking about when I say Order of Arrival. We're going to cover that a little bit later. Have some artillery here. Awesome. I'm just going to take a look here and see if there's anything else I'm missing. I'm not going to be getting into aircraft just yet or ships, 
but I will be talking about everything above that in terms of describing all the various units that you're going to see. Now, a great deal of these units like HQs and transport points and extenders have a large degree of functionality that I'm not going to be going to in depth in this video. I'm just going to be focusing mostly on combat units, but I will give a short description on what the other units do. Now, Tunisia 2 does not have extenders, and I'm not going to be talking about extenders in this video. It's part of the supply function of the game. It is a unit, a non-combat unit, and it has special properties, but I'm not going to get into that right now. And I'm not going to get too deep into what transport points are. Again, I'm mostly going to focus on combat units, more specifically uh, the kind of combat units that you're going to be using on the front line, because HQs, which I'm also going to explain what they are, they have a lot more extended functionality that, again, I'm going to be placing in a later video. All right? This video is just explicitly to talk about the vast majority of combat units that you're going to see, and that is a basic combat unit, as described up here. Although this one is a description of a multi-step division, which are not present in Tunisia. So, before I start getting into these units in Tunisia, I'm going to pull up Smolensk. I'm going to find somewhere on the map where I can give you a good example of a multi-step division. Let's zoom in here. North of Mogilev. I'm just going to move this marker off the hex. Alright. Let's see. There we go. This unit right here. Alright. So, I think you'll find that this unit right here that I'm looking at north of Mogilev is almost identical to the unit here in the basic combat unit diagram. And so I'm just going to go around in a clockwise fashion and describe exactly what you're looking at when you look at a basic combat unit like this. I'm going to start with a multi-step division. And I'm going to start from here on the left-hand side with this number, because that's what differentiates this unit from any other unit. Um, what's a multi-step division? Um, you're going to find them in a lot of OCS games, particularly Eastern Front games, and it's a functionality to represent larger formations in one unit. Um, divisions are a complex thing as part of a military formation. OCS will represent some divisions as a group of units called multi-unit formations, but it will also represent some divisions as a single unit called multi-step formations, right? The functional difference is simply that, well, there is a fair few differences to them, but most principally, the multi-step formation um, is one unit that can break off smaller units from it. Um, however, as an identified unit in the game, it is one unit, whereas a multi-unit formation is one division made up of multiple individual unique military units. That may sound a little bit confusing as I describe it now, but it's going to make more sense as I go through the different units here. But let's just start with the basic breakdown of what a combat unit is. So. Here on the left-hand side, that's a regimental equivalent size. Again, what's a regimental equivalent? That's a question we're going to answer later in the tutorial. But to give you a simple description, it's a number that represents the size of the unit in terms of manpower, weight, whatever term you might want to use. Right? Um, however, if it's not a multi-step formation, there will be a different number here, and it won't be colored yellow, and I'm going to get a little bit more into that later. But let's continue clockwise around the unit, starting with this symbol in the middle. Right? Anybody familiar with NATO symbology would know that this 2, this X, coming from Napoleonic times, represents an infantry unit. However, you by no means need to be immediately familiar with NATO symbology or the symbology of this game, because this game does not uniformly use NATO symbology, if you can see here in the basic uh, unit symbol types. I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can get a better idea of what we're looking at here. Um, so you can actually see here um, that not all of these are 
NATO standard. They are stylized. They are just part of the OCS system. But this list here describes a great deal of the symbols that you will see on ground units throughout the game. Um, most of these are cosmetic. They do not actually represent anything in game. Um, now, that's a complicated statement. What I mean by that is that the symbol itself, whether it be an X or a circle or anything like that, inherently does not designate the, comp the uh, capabilities of the unit. It's simply just a symbol to represent what that unit actually is. Its capabilities and what it can and can't do are dictated by other metrics. That being said, we can tell that this unit here is an infantry division. How do I know that it's a division? Well, looking at the symbol at the top of the formation marker, or the uh, unit symbol type, I should say, is two X's. Two X's uh, is a division in uh, traditional symbology. And you can see the unit sizes here in this little box on page four of the 4.3 manual that we're looking at, right? 2x's is a division, 3x's is a core, 4x's is an army. You'll find that cores and armies in these games are represented by headquarters formations. And then from a division we have a brigade represented by 1x, a regiment represented by 3 stripes, a Kampfgruppe, which is a special type of formation, just represented by kg. You might also have bg for battle group, a battalion, 2 stripes, and a company is 1 stripe. These symbols do have meaning especially further up the list, regiment and above, towards battalion and company, they do have uh, various meanings, especially in relation to regimental equivalents and the weight of units. However, it's not important for you to remember what they mean right now. But do remember that this symbol on top of the unit is important for, if, for when you are measuring the size of a unit, and I'll explain a little bit more about how that works later. On the right-hand side of the unit, we have the divisional affiliation. So in this case it's the letter, it's the number 100, or in the diagram it's the 90th guards. This is just describing the historical name of the unit. Um, it's important for a few reasons. Um, you need to identify a unit before you put it on the map when it's called for as a reinforcement or if it's part of a game setup. Um, if you're setting up a game physically, um, there are many different reasons why you would want to know what the name of the unit is, and in the case of a divisional unit like this, you can find it here on the right-hand side. <laughs> so, that's a brief description of what you're going to find on the top half of a basic combat unit. But as you can see, there's two halves to a basic combat unit. You've got the top half, as we just described before, and then you've got a bottom half which, in the case of a basic combat unit, excluding artillery and headquarters, will universally have a set of three numerals on the bottom half. A left-hand number, a middle number, and a right-hand number. And these numbers have different meanings. Starting with the right-hand number, because we're going clockwise, the right-hand number, as you can see, it's a black three here, in this basic combat unit diagram. However, it's important to remember that, that this isn't quite correct um, if it's an infantry division. It's better to use this here on the board um, because the most important thing about a movement allowance number, the number on the right hand side, is the color. There are three available colors um, for a movement allowance and that is white, red, and black. White means leg movement points, red means track movement points, and black means truck movement points. I'm going to give demonstrations on how all this works once we start covering movement in a future video. But the most important thing to remember is that those rules are universal, the color coding. So if you see a unit here with a color white on the right hand side number, that means that unit is moving on legs, whether that be the legs of a human being or the legs of an animal like a horse. It just means that it's moving on legs over terrain. Uh, I will give you an example of a red unit. 
So just zooming in here. Let's, let's bring this a little closer. There we go. Right, this unit here. You'll already notice that there are some distinct differences between this unit and the unit that I was talking about before. For example, there's no regimental equivalent size on the left. If it's not a multi-step formation, it will just be the name of the unit. But we'll get a little bit more into that later. For now, I just want to direct your attention to the right-hand number here. It's red. The yellow background has no special meaning. It is simply there for color, as in red might not always be easy to tell on a brown background or various other backgrounds. So the red number will always have a yellow background behind it, so it's easy to tell that it's red. And finally, black is truck movement points. And here we have a truck transport point. I'm not going to get right now into what that specifically is, but naturally it moves on truck movement points, and the number here is black. This unit over here, again, is a leg-based unit. The movement points are white. This one is track. The movement points are red. And this one is a truck. The movement points are black. But don't forget that combat units can also move uh, with truck movement points. This one is a good example right here. This uh, Derbyshire uh, Armored Car Battalion. As you can see, the number is black. It's moving on wheels, truck movement points. Um, so the very next thing after we talk about combat units will be movement so try to keep that most principally in your mind that white is leg movement points, red is track, black is truck uh, especially truck movement points. Truck movement points have a great deal of functionality in this game spread across many different chapters of the manual. Anyhow, let's just go back to Smolensk now we're going clockwise around the unit, so the next number is the action rating. Now I'm not going to get too deep into what the action rating does in terms of its game functionality, but I can give you a simple description. Think of it as a rating of the unit's competency, in a sense. Um, it has many in-game functions that usually turn it into a force multiplier of sorts, but without getting too deep into that, simply put, the higher the number, the more elite a unit is. The number usually ranges from 0 to 5. 0 being a bunch of rabble, and 5 being a crack elite unit. And the numbers in between being, you know, a variation of such. So for example, a 2 action rating unit might represent freshly trained soldiers. A 3 action rating might represent a somewhat veteranized formation, four and five action rating representing different stages of an elite combat unit. Although none of that is described in the manual, that's just my opinion. The truth is, is it's, ju it's just a number used as part of the mathematical calculations for the game. Naturally though, the higher the number, the better. Now, the next number, as we go clockwise around the unit, is combat strength. The number is the same here in the basic combat unit diagram as it is here. Keep in mind that this basic combat unit diagram is in black and white. It's not actually representing the true color of the unit. The true color of the unit is here in uh, the vassal. Right? Um, so the combat strength will always be a white number. There's no color variation to uh, combat strength. As you can see, this armored unit uh, has a white combat strength, as does this armored car unit. So there's no, there's, there's no need to worry about any kind of color variation in the combat strength. It's a simple value representing the combat strength of the unit. It can be modified, it can be halved, it can be doubled, it can be twisted in all kinds of ways. But much like with the action rating, although they have different functionality, the same principle applies. The higher the number, the better. So that's a basic breakdown of combat units. I just want to bring up these combat units here in uh, Tunisia 2 as just a quick example of the difference between what you might be looking at in a game like Smolensk, which has a lot of multi-step formations to represent large, lumbering infantry divisions, and whereas in Tunisia you've all divisions in Tunisia 
because it's a game set on a slightly smaller scale, one might say, are represented by multi-unit formations. How can you tell the difference between a multi-step formation and a multi-unit formation? Well, I can answer that question. This multi-unit formation here in Smolensk, it's got a regimental equivalent size indicator. Again, without even needing to understand what regimental equivalents are, I can simply tell you that if it's got this yellow number, this yellow circle with a number in it, the number doesn't have to be three. It can be one, it can be two, although most likely it's never going to be one. That's usually just a, a bit of a defunct measurement, but it's most likely going to be two or three or four. I'm not sure if it's going to be five. I haven't quite seen that, but it's going to be one of those numbers and it will be yellow and it will be in a circle. And if it has that, it's a multi-step formation. Now, what's a, how can you tell if something's a multi-unit formation? Well, multi-unit formations are principally identified by a colored stripe on the unit. If there is a colored stripe in the middle of the unit counter like this, it is identified as part of a multi-unit formation. You'll also find that the name of the, the naming convention of the unit is slightly different. So ordinarily, a name of a unit is actually on the left-hand side of the unit marker, as you can see here with 6 Commando or uh, 17th slash 21st, whatever that means, and the 5th Medium Artillery, third para, it's almost, in most cases it's going to be on the left hand side, only in the case of a multi-step formation is the name on the right hand side because the regimental equivalent occupies the left hand side. So just to simplify that a little further, if it's got a regimental equivalent size in a yellow dot, it's a multi-step formation. If it has a colored stripe along the unit, it's part of a multi-unit formation. Now, what do we call units that do not fit into those categories? Because I'm sure as you can see here in Tunisia, there's a number of units that do not have a stripe, but also they don't have a regimental equivalent size indicator either. These we call independent units. Now that might sound a little bit confusing because it doesn't quite fit into our thinking of in terms of military chains of command. It's purely a game function. There's really only three types of combat units, functionally speaking. Um, basic combat units. We're talking excluding things like artillery and headquarters. Although, well actually no, they are included as well. No. In terms of all of combat units, I believe this holds true. You will have multi-step formations. You will have multi-unit formations and you will have independent units. Those those three those three categories describe all combat units I believe you will come across. So this here is a multi-unit formation. This and this and this are independent units. They don't have either indicator on them. And this unit here in Smolensk is a multi-step formation. Suffice to say, if you want to learn the game through Tunisia, it's not quite important to understand what a multi-step formation is. But multi-step formations or uh, multi-step units, they are present in most other OCS games. So I'm going to be including them in this tutorial because it's a pretty important part of the game. So. That is the basic combat unit, excluding artillery and headquarters, but I'm going to go a little bit more into what they are right now. I've got two examples here in uh, Tunisia. This is a headquarters, and this is an artillery unit. They have a fundamentally different design to the basic combat units that we were talking about before. The majority of combat units that you're going to be working with will be a basic combat unit falling into one of those three categories, a multi-step formation, a multi-unit formation, or an independent unit. But there are other units that will be supporting your forces, such as a HQ or an artillery unit. They are combat units. Now the reason I keep saying combat unit is because we need to differentiate combat units and non-combat units. 
what is primarily the difference between a combat unit and a non-combat unit? Well, combat units all engage in the same type of combat, and that is ground combat on the board together in the same calculations. Non-combat units cannot engage in ground combat in a normal sense. If they are engaged by the enemy and they aren't defended by friendly combat units, their fate is decided in different, simpler systems, such as when an enemy combat unit overruns a group of trucks, or when an enemy combat unit captures your fortifications, or your ports, or your airfields. Those are not combat units, they are non-combat units. They are still units. They are still units on the board that you control. Your supply, your trucks, your airfields, your ports are still technically units that you are operating and controlling and using, but they are not combat units and what happens to them is resolved through different systems. So what I'm talking about today is combat units. A HQ is still a combat unit. An artillery unit is still a combat unit. And even though it doesn't have a combat strength printed on it, if you're paying attention, you may have already noticed that this HQ does not have this white combat strength number on the left-hand side. It has a number, but that's not combat strength. And furthermore, the artillery does not have a white combat strength number either. It has this very large number with a yellow background that also means something else, as described here in the uh, symbology, which I'm going to get into right now. Let's start with a headquarters unit. A headquarters unit is a very important unit in any OCS game that you play. They have many special functions, especially as part of your logistical network, but also as units responsible for engineering work as well. I'm not going to get into how those functions work, but I am going to describe to you what they do as a combat unit. Now, I believe in the manual I can actually take a look and go to specialized units, HQ units, I can go to HQs and combat. This is much further into the manual, but I just want to have this in front of me as I'm describing it to you to make sure I'm giving you the correct information. Right? I'm not talking about any of the special functions of headquarters. I'm only talking about this headquarters unit in relation to the other basic combat units we were talking about because they are a combat unit and if they are unfortunate enough to find themselves in the field of fire they will be part of a combat on the ground. So, HQs in combat. HQs have some ratings that are not printed on the counters. Their action rating, which is the middle number, is zero. In combat mode they have a parenthesized defensive only, I'm going to speak a little bit more about that later, strength of five and in move mode this is reduced to one. Modes is something that we're going to be covering in a later video, but in a general sense, try to keep in mind that HQs are not very strong. And if they're on the move, they're even weaker. They need supply like any other combat unit, and they need to change into a movement mode when they retreat. Again, I'm going to describe that a little bit more in depth at a later time. All right. But for our purposes in talking about basic combat units today, it's important to remember that a HQ is still a combat unit, even though most of its statistics are hidden. They're not printed on the counter. They're not printed on the counter because they're universal. Every HQ has the same combat stats. A zero action rating, a five combat strength when it's in combat mode, a one combat strength when it's moving in move mode. Right. And that can be further modified, but we're going to get into that a little bit more later. Right. What do these numbers mean, then? Well, the right-hand side number is the same as the right-hand side number that you'll see in any combat unit. Just to say, by the way, the in a HQ unit, the uh, unit symbol will most likely be the flag of whatever country the uh, unit comes from, although that can, be, that can vary from game to game. The uh, formation is a core, which you can see if we just go back to page 4, zoom out, we can see over here in the unit sizes that three X's is a core. And again, the name of the unit is on the left-hand side because this is not a multi-step formation, it's a headquarters. So this is fifth core, the British fifth core, that's a British flag. Now back to the number on the right, that is movement allowance. It's black, which means it's truck, like we explained before. 
it's zero, which, correct, it can't go anywhere right now. It can if you change modes, but modes is something that I'm outside of the scope of this video. But put simply, I'm flipping the unit to its other side. I'm going to explain the functionality of that at a later time, but as you can see, the numbers have changed. The number on the right is now 14, it's still truck movement points, it's still black. The number on the left is slightly lower than what we saw before, but it's still a number. It is not a combat strength, it is a throw range. I'm not going to explain what that is right now, but it's a supply functionality. It's not relevant to its immediate engagement in combat, if it was to engage in combat with these other units here. It is part of its supply functionality, and we're going to do a much bigger video on supply later in the series. Artillery? That's a little bit easier for me to describe. Artillery is also a combat unit, although its primary function is not to engage in direct confrontation with the enemy. Its primary function is to barrage the enemy. Now, in regards to how does it barrage the enemy, and in what method do you do that, I'm going to be getting into that in a later video. I'm not here to talk about barraging the enemy, again much like with the HQ, I'm just going to talk about its purpose as a combat unit, because it is a combat unit and it can find itself in the field of fire. Now, let's just go in the manual, and much like I did before, I'm going to go to chapter 13, specialized units, and I'm going to 13.4, artillery units, and just like with HQs, there is a special category here called artillery and combat. It is very short. You've probably noticed that HQ in combat was a very short section of the manual, and artillery in combat is very short as well, because these guys are not meant to show up in combat. It is not wise to allow them to fall into combat, but they are combat units, and they can be in combat. I just wouldn't recommend that you do it in most cases, but anyhow, let's just see what it says. Artillery in combat. Artillery units have a parenthesized defensive-only strength of 1 in both combat and move mode. This number is not printed on the counters, just like with the HQs. Now you've heard this term parenthesized before, and so I just want to specify that this is something that you will see come up on a number of combat units. Let me pull up an example in Smolensk. This uh, NKVD unit here in Smolensk, it has a number of things that I haven't talked to you about yet, about combat units, a few little quirks. Right. Its unit name is still on the left-hand side. It's a border unit, which you can see in the uh, unit symbol. It has three stripes, which makes it a regiment. These are all things that we've spoken about previously. On the right-hand side, it says NKVD, which identifies it as part of a special faction in this game. I'm not going to get into its functionality, but it's just there as an identifier. You'll also notice that behind the action rating, there's a yellow dot. That's quite simple to explain. That just means that when that unit dies, it cannot be rebuilt. If a unit does not have that yellow marker, as you've seen with every other unit, it is rebuildable when it dies. That's just the simple meaning of that yellow dot. But it's going to come up later as well. Now, onto the main event. The combat strength of this unit, as you can see, is parenthesized. Those two symbols on the left and right of the number 2 are called a parenthesis, if, you, if you're not aware of that. And so we say that that number is parenthesized. Right? And as you can see here, parenthesized, defensive only. And that's just what it means. A parenthesized combat strength cannot attack. Its purpose only exists on the defense. So this unit, and this headquarters, and this artillery, all have a parenthesized combat strength, although the headquarters and the artillery's combat strength is a hidden stat shared by all HQ and artillery units. So just like with the HQ, a artillery unit has a hidden combat strength. It's one, regardless of what mode it's in, although it can be modified by further modes. And that's the same for every single artillery unit you're going to see. However, in a short addendum to that, if you're playing some of the bigger Eastern Front games or uh, Beyond the Rhine, just to get into specifics, there are multi-step artillery units. They're not present in the games that I'm describing today. They are not described in the OCS 4.3 rule set. They are game-specific units, so I'm not going to be explaining them today. So for the purposes of what I'm teaching here about the OCS system, all you need to know is that the artillery units in the OCS system are one combat strength. 
that's what you're going to be running into. Only change that if you see it getting changed in the game specific rules. And as we mentioned before, that's the purpose of a game specific rules. They exist to modify the existing rule set. Right. So that's a, a look. Let's just go back to page four and see if I'm leaving anything out. I'm going to zoom out here. Right. So we've spoken about a basic combat unit. We've spoken about unit size, what the symbol means. Ah, we haven't spoken about that yet. The color of the unit symbol. You've probably noticed that this unit has a yellow background in its symbol, but none of these other units have a background. And this unit that we were talking about in Smolensk, it doesn't have a colored background either. The color is just the color of the, the larger counter, right? But you're going to find, as with this unit and this unit down here, which are yellow and red, they have special meaning. As mentioned here, a yellow background means it's an armor unit, and a red background means it's a mechanized unit, and everything else just falls into the other category. Not yellow or red means other type unit. Now, these have special combat functionalities. Um, however, I'm not going to be getting into that right now. We'll be looking at that a little bit further once we get into uh, ground combat as a whole. So just going a little bit further through the manual to make sure that I've covered unit size, unit symbol, divisional affiliation, movement allowance, action rating, combat strength, regimental coolant size, yep. Artillery, uh, there is a number on artillery that I didn't explain. Um, so the action rating, as you can see here on the combat units, it's the uh, it's that number five four and artillery has an action rating too. Remember, headquarters have a zero action rating every time. Artillery have a variable action rating. In this case, the action rating is two, but there is a number underneath the action rating. In this case, it's a number four. This is the range in hexes, and again, that's a barrage functionality. I'm going to get into that a bit more when we look at the video on barrages. But just keep in mind that the top number is the action rating, which is just the same as the action rating on these other combat units. Same functionality. The bottom unit is the range. We spoke about HQ units. Transport points. I have one here. They, again, they have a special functionality and they are not a combat unit. They do not contribute in any meaningful way to ground combat between combat units. They are either captured or destroyed if enemy combat units pounce upon them undefended. I'm going to be doing a little bit more of an in-depth video on how transport points work and how the supply system works, but they do have some things in common with combat units. Or I guess I should say, really, they have one thing in common, and that is the movement allowance. Just as combat units have a movement allowance, and it has a color designating what type of that movement allowance it is, as do transport points. So this is a truck transport point. It has a number on the right that is black, and that black means truck movement points. That's all you need to know about transport points for now until we do a video focusing on their larger functionality. Now, as I mentioned, I'm not going to be getting into extenders right now. They really deserve a video all of their own once we get a little bit deeper into the supply network. But that is a basic description of the kind of combat units you're going to be seeing in operational combat series. Right? I think you'll find that if we look around the map here in Smolensk, the vast majority of what you see might be here, a multi-unit formation, another multi-unit formation, a multi-step formation, so on and so forth, a headquarters, just as we talked about before. Same as with Tunisia. Now, while we're still in the video, I want to talk about the other type of unit, a non-combat unit. Let's keep reading the manual together, shall we? Because I'd say that for this purposes of 3.0 and 3.1 in this diagram, excluding aircraft and excluding extenders, etc., which we're going to be coming back to, I'd say we've done a good covering of that thus far. Let's take a look here. Right, OCS standard markers, yep. 
I'm going to be going over each of these markers individually in various different videos in each of their own uh, specific sections. Um, but it's also helpful to see these size abbreviations. As we saw before, a company being one stripe, a battalion being two stripes, a regiment between three stripes, a brigade is one X and a division is two X's, they are shortened to CO, BN, RGT, BDE and DIV. You'll see that come up in lists of units in reinforcements and setups. Right? So, as I mentioned, you've got mobility types. Let's zoom back in. Here, at, uh, here in this bone box that I'm using for demonstration purposes. I'm just going to zoom this in again. There we go. Right. Color indicates a ground unit's mobility type. Leg, truck, or tract. This can be different from one side of the counter to the other. Note that if the movement allowance is an outline font, use the color inside the outline. So for example, there is a bit of an outline font on these leg movement points, but anybody can see that that's a white number. It's not a black number. That's a black number. That's a red number with a yellow background. Right? So leg units have a white MA. MA stands for movement allowance. Truck units have a black MA. Track units have a red MA in a yellow box. A type symbol has one wheel for semi-motorized, two wheels for fully motorized. This notion is for historical interest only. Now I just want to bring that up. Like I was trying to explain before, a great deal of the actual symbols that you see on these units, such as this one for commando, or you know this one for tank, they are important to a certain extent for identifying what type of unit they are. Furthermore, some of them actually do have significant meaning, such as this para symbol, that does have meaning in game functionality. However, outside of examples such as para, a lot of these notations are just for historical interest only. So just keep that in mind, that in most cases, what we've been talking about so far is really the most important metrics when looking at a unit. Not necessarily what it says inside this box, but the numbers, its divisional affiliation, the colors of the numbers, etc., etc. Those are really the bread and butter of what's actually going to describe what that particular unit is capable of and what it's meant to do. Now, just as we described before, a multi unit formation is a group of units with the same higher level designation, such as 1st Armored Division or 6th Tank Corps. In this case, we've got the 6A, which stands for 6th Armored Division. Colored stripes mark these formations in newer games, as you can see here. Some ground units have a yellow dot behind their action rating. These cannot be rebuilt. Let's go back to this border unit right here. Cannot be rebuilt, just as we described before. Right? Combat units. Combat units are any ground units with a combat strength. Each side of the counter shows the unit in a different mode. Note that HQs and artillery are combat units, even though their combat strengths are not printed on the counter and here we have combat categories. The color inside the unit symbol rectangle indicates a ground unit's combat category. That's what I was describing before. Let's go back to Tunisia. Armor has a yellow background, just like this guy right here. Mechanized, like this guy, has a red background. Other has any color other than red or yellow. Now, there is some exceptions to this, unfortunately, and I'm going to get into them a little bit later as we get into the combat functionality, but this design note describes it pretty well. A unit with an armor unit symbol can have a red background. Such a unit has a tank force with an infantry component. Other such combinations are possible. The combination of color and symbol depict functionality as well as nominal organizations for a unit. So that's mostly a pretty solid rule to go by. However, there is things called anti-tank effects, which I'm not going to get into in any effect whatsoever right now, but try to keep in mind that some games do not follow the ex this exact system in terms of representing the anti-tank capabilities of a unit. This applies only to the Russian tank divisions, which I'll get into a little bit more in depth in a future video. Uh, a unit with a combat value in parentheses is not attack capable. It can only defend. We've already talked about that. 
the action rating grades a unit's leadership training equipment and cohesion. Well, I guess I was wrong. It is written in the manual that that's exactly what it means. So you can take the manual's word for it. Printed values range from 0 to 5 with higher numbers being better. Um, now it is possible for these numbers to be modified by in-game functions to be more than 5 or less than 5, such as minus 1. Right. Uh, Multi-step combat units, usually infantry divisions, let's bring that up in front of us, like this guy right here, let's zoom in again. There he is. Have a regimental equivalent number printed on the counter. The regimental equivalent value is used for a number of purposes such as stacking and transportation, and it is in a colored dot for easy identification. Step losses reduce the strength and size of these units. Again, that's a combat functionality and we're going to be getting into it in a later video. Specialized units covered by the series rules are listed below. HQ units, which we spoke a little bit about. Rail repair units, which are going to come up in a future unit. Artillery units, we spoke a little bit about those. Replacement units, future video. Engineer units, future video. Breakdown units, future video. Now, independent units. Any unit that is neither part of a multi-unit formation nor a multi-step unit is independent. This is important mostly for fuel supply, like I was telling you before. Multi-step formations, like this guy. And then we have multi-unit formation, like this guy, with the, yellow, with the uh, blue stripe to identify that it's a multi-step formation. And everything else is an independent unit. Just like it says here, any unit that is neither part of a multi-unit formation nor a multi-step unit is independent. Try to remember that. It'll come up a fair bit as we go along. Now for the next part of the video, non-combat units. Non-combat units come in five types. Ports, air bases, hedgehogs, transport points, and supply points. Let me bring up a few examples of these. All right, I'm just going to move a little bit of this around. All right. I'm going to put an air base. I'm going to put a supply point, we're going to put a transport point, I'm going to put a hedgehog. Where's the hedgehogs? Here we go. Ports, air bases, hedgehogs, transport points, and supply points. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. So, let's get these out of the way. Let's zoom in. So what we have here, this, which is actually just part of the map, you can ignore this, uh, just move that out of the way. Right, this symbol here is a port. If you see this symbol on any OCS map, it indicates that that hex contains a port. This here is an airbase marker. It will vary from color from game to game. And in Tunisia, this is actually the color in the Tunisia Vassal module, but if you're playing on the board, they're yellow. And you'll find that a lot of airbase counters are a universal yellow. Yellow does not indicate the size, you, the, the, uh, who owns the airbase. You need to keep a note of who owns the airbase. This is a supply point. It is a uh, counter representation of a stockpile of supplies that is stackable, combinable, transportable, a very, very important part of this game. And they come in different values and different denominations. But just for your reference, this is one supply point and this is what it looks like and it is a non-combat unit. This is a transport point, just as we described before, it is also a non-combat unit, but it has one property of a combat unit and that is that it has a movement allowance. That is the only thing it really shares in common with combat units. And this is a hedgehog. It's a marker of varying levels from 1 to 4, I believe, um, that represents field fortifications that you can build using engineering units or other game functionality. Right? So just to go over that list again, we've got port, airbase, supply points, transport points, and hedgehogs. This little symbol here and this little number here are part of... Uh, Tunisia. And technically speaking, they are non-combat units of a special sort, but they are specific to Tunisia. Um, for example, well, the B is not a combat unit, it's just a geographical marker. Uh, that B is Bon, 
Uh, but this number one here is a it's a flak point. I'm not going to get into what that means. Some games have flak points, some don't. They're a pretty simple system once you get to understand how flak and air missions work. But I'm not going to get into that right now. For now, we're talking about non-combat units described in the five types in the 4.3 manual. Ports, air bases, supply points, transport points, hedgehogs. These are ground units but not combat units, hence non-combat units. They have no combat strength, and they cannot be used to absorb step losses, or in more simple sense, losses of combat units. An organic truck has the same transport values on both front and back of the counter. Other non-combat units flip to show different numbers of generic points and levels. What does that mean? What's an organic truck? Okay, let's talk a little bit about that. An organic truck, I'm going to get a little bit more into that, but it is a non-combat unit that is part of a multi-unit formation. Um, we're going to go a little bit more into their functionality, especially in the movement video. But put simply, they are a transport point, they are not a combat unit, but they have unique functionality as compared to regular transport points because they are part of a division and they can be essentially seen as an inherent part of the division's logistical capabilities. It carries supplies for the division in a very simple sense. Right? But as I play the game and demonstrate a few functions, uh, you'll see exactly how they work. All, right? All the manual's trying to point out here is that um, if you're actually playing the game on the board, these are one-sided, they're just a truck. Right, they don't flip over, they don't change size or anything like that. However, air bases, ports, supply points, transport points, hedgehogs, technically speaking, they all do come in different sizes and can be reduced and increased depending on player actions or things other than player actions. Um, let's start with 3.3a, supply points. Supply points are supplies in a specific location. A single supply point roughly equates to about 1,500 tons of consumable supply. An ideal mix of fuel, ammo, and stores is assumed. A supply point can be divided into four smaller amounts called tokens. Let's talk a little bit about that. I'm going to pull this supply point aside somewhere for us to take a deeper look at it. Let's go up here into the water. So this is a supply point. I'm going to split it up into a few different things to give you an example of what we're talking about. So here I have a number of different denominations of supply points. Well, technically speaking, only these are supply points. These are a smaller denomination called tokens. Um, as mentioned here, a supply point can be divided into four smaller amounts called tokens, or T. So there's SP, supply points, and tokens, T. Each token is a quarter of a supply point. The supply points and tokens can break down and recombine as needed. Supply points have no inherent movement ability. They can be moved via the site's abstract re or rail or sea capacity or by units with a transport capacity. Transport points, ship types, certain aircraft. The term for supply points in a hex, whether loaded on a transport point or unloaded on the ground, is a supply dump. So any of these present on the map generates something called a supply dump. Supply points are generic units and can be captured and recaptured when control of a hex changes. Now, this video is not about OCS's supply system. That in and of itself requires a whole video. So I'm not going to talk about what these do. Not right now. I'm just showing you what they look like. All right. And the denominations, because they are a value. Tokens are a quarter of one supply point. The best way I like to think about it, I'm not from the United States, but I know that you have quarters, as in 25 cent coins in the United States. The best way to think of it as one token is a quarter, or 25 cents. And a supply point is a dollar. If you don't live in the United States, I'm not sure of a better analogy. 
um, we don't have 25 cent coins where I come from but basically you've got one token here if you times that by two you get two tokens you can have two tokens or you can add another one in and you can have three tokens if you add another one in then you have four tokens but four quarters makes a hole and a hole is a supply point if you have a hole if you add another supply point onto that you have two supply points and three and four and so on and that goes on and on and on and on right and for example two supply points is eight tokens because one supply point is four tokens that can be difficult to wrap your head around at first but it gets pretty easy just think of it as quarters adding up to a dollar right so again I'm not here to talk about the actual functionality of what they do in the game that's going to come up later but just keep in mind that these are your on-map representation of stockpiles of supplies transport points let's take a look at various different types of transport points we might come across in this game so here we've got this French charcoal truck don't worry about what that means it's a Tunisia specific unit a historical example We've got a uh, we've got a organic truck, and let me just go to the uh, Allied arrivals and pick up a. Here we go, perfect. And let's zoom in on that, shall we? Cool. So here we have three examples of transport points, but they are not exhaustive. There are quite a large number of transport points. Actually, you know what, I ought to bring in one more example for you guys, just to give you an idea of the diversity that you might come across. Here is our friend, the mule. These are all transport points, and let's describe it from the manual. Transport points have a point value that shows both their size and how many supply points they can carry. Thus, a one-point truck's full load is one supply point. Transport points can represent just about any kind of vehicle or animal pressed into service, from trucks to elephants. Transport points with a unit ID on their counter or orga are organic trucks that belong to a specific multi-unit formation, such as this guy. So he's not an organic truck, and he is not an organic truck. These are just regular transport points. They are, have no unit affiliation. And this is a transport point, but it's not a truck. It's a bunch of donkeys or mules. Right? So again, I'm not going to get into the functionality of how these guys carry supply, but I can tell you in a very simple sense that their primary function in OCS is to carry supply. That is basically what they do, and they have a special functionality to do that, and they will, you will find that they are a very important part of your logistical network. Now for the final three, right? ports, air bases, and hedgehogs. Let's just go up here. Right? I've got a port. We've got an airbase, and we've got a hedgehog. I can use Vassal to increase or decrease the size of this hedgehog. I believe the maximum size an airbase can be, a singular airbase is three, and it can go down to level one, right? And there are various rules governing how each of these three things work, but I'm not going to be getting into them in depth right here and now. If anything, each of them may almost deserve a whole video in and of itself, just to describe how they work but most likely I'm just going to be demonstrating along as I play the game as part of this tutorial. So, ports, airbases, and hedgehogs of various sizes can be begin the game in place or be constructed. These cannot be moved. Ports can be damaged, which reduces their capacity until repaired. Airbases can be reduced to a smaller size. Hedgehogs can be reduced in level by friendly, not enemy, action. References to air bases in these rules generally include airstrips and aircraft carriers as well. Reference to ports include printed ports and converted LSTs. That's something that comes up quite later in this tutorial as part of the naval function. Important note, ports and hedgehogs are often printed on the map. A non-combat unit is considered to be to be in each such hex, right? So that this port is printed on the map and you'll find that of pretty much all ports are just printed on the map. They are not usually buildable, um, but if I'll give you an example. If we go down the coast here in Tunisia, you'll find these printed hedgehogs. They are printed on the map. Map printed hedgehogs are pretty much always governed by game specific rules, so we'll get into that a little bit more later. 
so again ships and aircraft are not something I'm going to be going to in depth uh, in any kind of capacity in this video um, this video was just to give you a basic description of the combat units that you're going to see on the board and what the various non-combat units that you're going to come across in the game are so just as a basic reminder of what we've spoken about a combat unit is different from a non-combat unit. These are the two basic categories of units. They are separated by the fact that combat units can engage in ground combat with other ground combat units. Non-combat units cannot and if they are engaged undefended by enemy units they are handled in special ways which we'll get into in later videos. So thanks for joining me today. Um, I know that I haven't necessarily started playing the game yet, but I just wanted to get some real fundamentals out of the way before we start playing. The next video I'm going to be focusing on how to move units, as well as an introduction to the game sequence, because I'm going to be playing the game and I'm going to be executing a game sequence and I'm going to explain to you how that sequence goes, but for now all that's important is that now you know how to read the map and you have a very basic but important understanding of what you're looking at when you see units on the board, whether you're playing in Vassal or whether you're playing on, on an actual board. So once again, thanks for joining me today and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.